Mazda started as a cork company, graduating to making tools, then motorized three-wheeled rickshaws. Humble beginnings for an automaker now known for the rotary engine, Miata, and Zoom Zoom. The all-new 2024 CX-90 continues the company's reach higher. If you haven't heard, its vehicles are going upmarket. If I had the rights to the Jefferson's TV theme song, Moving On Up, that's what would be playing here. In every dimension, the 90 is larger than the CX-9 it's replacing, but still tucks into most garages. With three rows of seating and a reputation for balanced handling, this is Zoom Zoom with some family room. There's a turbocharged inline six-cylinder engine with two different tunings. Both are 48-volt mild hybrids. All-wheel drive is standard on every CX-90. Thinking of dipping your toe into the electric vehicle lifestyle? The powertrain that I'm driving is a plug-in hybrid, so there's electric power when you want it, gas when you need it. The EPA rates the all-electric range at 26 miles, which will surely disappoint the glass half-empty folks. But let's do some math for the half-full people. If you charge this every night but miss two weeks out of the year, because, you know, that's going to happen, and you only get 23 miles out of the pack, that's still 8,000 miles of all-electric driving annually, two-thirds of what most people cover. And electricity is usually a lot cheaper than gasoline. A plug-in hybrid's advantage? Most daily driving can be done using smooth, quiet electric motoring. For road trips, switch to gas. No need for charging, even when driving cross-country. The disadvantage is, unlike a pure EV, there's an engine and transmission to maintain. Until the all-electric Kia EV9 hits showrooms in early 2024, this is the only somewhat affordable, roomy, three-row all-wheel drive SUV to offer any kind of decent electric range. Mitsubishi Outlander and Kia Sorento are smaller, which brings me to pricing. A base preferred model begins at just under 49 grand. This top trim premium plus version MSRPs for $59,000. There's a strong argument that the Mazda gets a best in class cabin. There's that premium positioning for you. Comparably equipped BMW X5 and Volvo XC90 plugins hover near $80,000. The gas side of this powertrain is a 189 horsepower 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. The electric motor makes 173 horses. United, it's 323 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque with the tank filled with specified premium fuel. That's similar to the performance tuned version of the inline six. Generally, the gas engine doesn't fire up. This is a hybrid after all. Like gas-only models, this has a geared 8-speed automatic transmission. There's a drive shaft running to the back tires. Manual shifting is a thing. This is a Mazda, after all. Switch drive modes and the gauge cluster will let you know. Dampers are fixed. No adjustments there. Also, when in sport mode, it assumes that you want full power and kicks the engine on. The 17.8 kilowatt hour pack can be charged using the four cylinder and the driver can set the level, but plugging it in is much more efficient. The crisp head up display is large with lots of information while driving. It's hard to show you here. In EV mode, this is only using the electric motor. Duh, and so it's not gonna be as snappy off the line, but here's the thing, electric motors, lots of low end torque. This is fine for city driving, it really is. In case you're wondering, once the battery is depleted, this will just automatically switch into hybrid mode. No fuss, no muss. And here's the thing, even if you're in EV mode and you floor the throttle, the gas engine will kick on. You'll know this because there's kind of a click at the end of the pedal travel. So essentially, you've asked it to do this. Using both gas and electric, this will spool up to 60 miles an hour in about six and a half seconds. And there's plenty of passing power on two lane roads. Isn't it great when things work together? Don't you wish humans did that more? 
I had the CX-90 for a week and charged it nearly every night. Most days I burned through the pack and ran miles using the engine. But after seven days, I only used two gallons of dinosaur juice for those who hate going to the gas station. In the real world, I am seeing 24 miles of all electric range and the temperatures are in the low 70s. So there is some potential to save some money here if you plug it in. But a reminder, the fuel economy for a hybrid is not that great. Gas only, this is 25 miles per gallon according to the EPA, which is exactly the same as both inline six engines. One reason to go with the six is towing. Both tunings of that tug 5,000 pounds. The P heads max is 3,500. But my guess is this will mainly attract parents that appreciate fun from behind the wheel. The plug-in hybrid is the heaviest CX-90 that you can buy, weighing in at some 5,200 pounds. So a Miata, this is not. But this still delivers Mazda-grade handling. And unless you've been living under a rock, you know that Mazda does driving dynamics really, really well, even in a three row crossover. The suspension is double wishbone up front, independent multi-link in back, a great start, bend it hard into a turn, and Mazda's G-Vectoring Control Plus reduces engine torque and applies the rear inside brakes ever so slightly. This is imperceptible to the driver, but the hairs on the back of your neck will sense that there's more control and precision happening. In addition to the transmission shifts, which are really accurate and smooth, um, there are some subtle hybrid dynamics that you'll notice, especially enthusiasts. For them, I think that I would recommend the inline six because it might be distracting to people who are driving hard. That's not to say the hybrid is lumpy or awkward, it's dynamic is well done. The transition from regenerative braking to using the physical discs feels normal too. I'm talking about Princess and the P kind of car guys that detect every minute operation happening in a drivetrain. They'll also notice a little chassis shutter hitting large bumps. Evangelists of pure electric vehicles don't seem to understand that EVs don't work for every household, especially busy families without easy access to level two charging. Plug-in hybrids will at least get them a lot of electric range. If it's difficult or expensive to run level two charging out to your parking spots, plug-in hybrids do a great job of charging on 120. I know, I do it. My very old house is far away from my cave of a garage that's set into the side of the hill. Now, this will charge up essentially overnight. But here's the thing. Even without a full pack, the petrol side of this powertrain will always save your bacon. Unless you run out of gas. CX-90 can't use commercial DC fast charge terminals like the smaller Mitsubishi Outlander, but I did take advantage of some free level two stations in my neighborhood. In the time it took to grab some popcorn and see a movie, I had a full charge, two and a half hours. And if you're wondering, I saw the Barbie movie and I'm perfectly secure with that. Had some awesome cars. We can't all drive pink Corvette EVs in the real world. Mazda offers up a rich cockpit alternative. Besides, you can't haul a family in any vet. The materials in this Premium Plus model are elevated from what you'd find in a Toyota Highlander or Nissan Pathfinder, but not as poshly executed as BMW and Volvo. There are alternative trim materials like wood available in other CX-90s, but not cork. That would be a heritage Easter egg. Mazda's use of glossy black plastic seems to be a thing of the past. The wheel is heated, so are the seats, vented too. Those chairs are supportive without being restrictive, uh, covered in Napa leather here. I do have some gripes. The shifter's action is smooth and dampened, but a few times it was fussy going in or out of park, usually when I was in a hurry. And then there's Mazda's user interface. Layout and flow is fine. It's possible to schedule charging if your utility offers cheap or even free electricity at night. But for those who love touchscreens, usually this needs the rotary knob to navigate menus, even though this larger display is touch sensitive. 
Something interesting, Mazda lets you use the touchscreen for CarPlay when you're just sitting here, but when you're moving, you have to use the knob, and it's awkward. Knobs and CarPlay don't work very well. There's a phone charge pad, and at this trim level, device projection is wireless. A lot of the CarPlay and all assume Android Auto functions can be used via voice commands, so there's that. Native navigation is available, but this vehicle doesn't have the Maps data card installed. There are enough hard buttons, so the rotary knob and screen don't have to be used for everything. If you have to endure kids' music, the Bose system in this vehicle is rich and punchy, and the glass roof is pretty big. Only the base model plug-in hybrid gets a bench seat in the second row for stuffing eight people into the CX-90. The top trim levels seat seven. This row does the usual stuff that you'd want. Those in the way back will appreciate if you're considerate with the seat position. There's separate climate. The Premium Plus version adds heated seats. These pockets are especially big. Doors open wide enough to get car seats in and out. Both seat backs get storage. Getting to the rear is easy enough. Small kids might have an issue stepping up to get in. Adults will find the path a little tight, especially for my size 11s. I've set the travel of row number two about midway, and now that I'm settled at five foot nine, I'm okay back here. Keeping in mind that almost all three row crossovers in SUVs have cushions that are very low, so your knees are going to be up high. Headroom, I've got enough of that. Knee room, the same. And if the seat was back in position, I could kind of slide my feet underneath. Now, there are belts for three back here, but unless they're very skinny adults, you're only going to want to have two back here, even kids. There are some accoutrements back here, like cup holders, and each side gets a USB port. There are no pockets on the seat backs, but that isn't common anyways. Oftentimes, these are used as two-row vehicles with the third row down for a bigger trunk area. If you're going to be using this as emergency seating, it doesn't matter as much. The design of the CX-90 is pleasant enough. It certainly looks like a Mazda, maybe cx 50 dad, especially up front where it gets the brand's signature grille frame and squinty headlamps. Not a lot of flourishes and swage lines that jump out. The contours are simple and clean. People unfamiliar with the winged Mazda logo may not know who makes it. Maybe Buick? Chances are they won't be looking down here. Uh, bright work is kept to a minimum. The hood? is quite long, suggesting performance. The rear, a bit bulbous, no doubt for better passenger and cargo packaging. The look is premium, if a little anonymous. I'd like to see it in Mazda's signature Soul Red Crystal paint. Typically, three-row SUVs and crossovers have very little space behind the back row. They just do. If you need to haul a lot of people and gear, get a van. Sorry, the truth stings. TP packs are slightly larger than a carry-on suitcase. Keep that in mind if you're hauling six passengers to the airport. This is about 15 cubic feet. A few things like the portable charge cord stash here and there's a temporary spare tire under here. That and things like these will help make life a little easier. And since the cargo space isn't very deep, it's easy to drop the backs. The Turbo S model is available with captain's chairs instead of the third row bench. This configuration is a respectable 40 cubes. In full-on Costco trip mode, the CX-90 is good for hauling 74 cubic feet of Cheerios, rotisserie chicken, and that really large flat screen TV your spouse warned you not to buy. I always do the TP trunk test with seating for at least four. The champs in the three-row crossover segment are Chevy Traverse and Buick Enclave at 20 packs of the two-ply, followed closely by Volkswagen Atlas at 19, Palisade and Telluride score 17. The Mazda takes on a dozen packs, so not as useful. On the flip side, this is more fun to drive. Let's go to red light, green light. Green light. CX-90 is about as much driving fun as you're going to get out of a three-row family hauler. Still, it remains comfortable, kind of a black art there. 
The interior is trimmed out very nicely, better than most mainstream brands. It's available with different powertrains for different lifestyles. Yellow lights? I like the idea of the plug-in hybrid, but it often didn't cover all electric daily driving for me. Excellent driving dynamics? Uh, sure, I noticed a little chassis quiver hitting big potholes. The smaller size is good for city driving and garageability, but that means less passenger room. Red light. Running this hybrid in gas-only mode is not as efficient as you'd expect, and it wants expensive premium fuel. I'd like to be able to use CarPlay with the touchscreen while driving, not sure why Mazda locks that out, and I'll quibble about the transmission selector that was temperamental when I was in a hurry. Mazda has always been a brand that infuses soul into its vehicles. That's commendable. Not many automakers manage that. And that mission works well for elevating the brand to a more premium position. But it's a tricky tightrope. Near luxury doesn't seem to cut it with American buyers. Look what happened to Mercury and Osmobile. This handles really well. And this is the largest vehicle that Mazda makes. But if you need to max out room, You'd probably be going with Grand Highlander, Telluride, Traverse, or Palisade. None of those offer a plug-in hybrid powertrain, right? And I would like more all-electric range from this, but you know, at the end of the day, or actually at the end of the year, it all adds up. Fortunately, Mazda offers a choice, to plug in or not to plug in. That is the question that only a buyer can make. But if you're a dedicated parent looking for a little driving fun, the Mazda CX-90 plug-in hybrid offers drivers some passion and environmental responsibility. Impressive for a company that started out making cork. As long as we're on Origins, the Mazda name comes from two different places as far as I can tell. The Asian god Ahura Mazda that represents wisdom and harmony, plus the founder's name, Jijido Matsuda. In Japan, the brand is pronounced Matsuda. In Canada, it's Mazda. You Canadians. Normally, this is the time where I call Martin Campbell up to say thanks for driving duties, but he's at a work emergency. He's an IT specialist and he's moving servers. He's a really smart guy. So instead, I'm thanking Rob Calero, who's not here. Um, I dropped him off at his girlfriend's house. So uh, whatever. Thanks, guys. And a reminder that if you like these videos, you find them entertaining or educational, if it's helped you, please consider supporting this channel by using YouTube Super Thanks or Venmo. Sorry to do the NPR thing on you, but, you know, YouTube does not pay a livable wage. Just saying. I need to keep them fed and coffeeed up. They volunteer to drive, so that's the least I can do. These videos are a labor of love. Before I go, there are naysayers that believe plug-in hybrids are not a viable technology going forward. I disagree, and I'm a huge EV fan. In fact, my next vehicle will be all electric. But EVs don't work for everybody right now. For starters, manufacturers can't make enough of them. And if you live in an apartment or a condo, chances are you can't charge where you sleep. And commercial charging can be inaccessible, or at the very least, expensive. In Seattle, it's four times the cost of charging at home. And there's this argument that plug-in hybrids are just dragging around a heavy gas engine and transmission. Uh, think about how heavy a pack is on an EV that has a 300-mile range. That's not an argument. And typically, people aren't really using the true potential of that pack on a daily basis. You know, plug-in hybrids aren't perfect either. They have gas engines, you have to maintain those. But at the end of the day, buy what you need. Thanks for coming to my sermon. Um, and you're still here at the end, so I'm assuming you like these videos, so sign up, be part of the driven crowd, um, click notifications too. And yeah, you can follow me on social media, but I'm not doing that as much these days. Just leave a comment here. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.